You're ready to go. Okay. All right, I would like to call this meeting of the Community Association of Sterling Oaks Board of Directors. This is a call to order. Lanny, do we have a quorum? Yes, we do. Good. The sole objective of this meeting is to uh, discuss and vote on a change to our COVID management plan. Lanny is going to be the primary uh, talker <laughs> at this meeting. I think the way to progress, Lanny, is to give the background for why uh, we think that a change is necessary to our COVID management plan, and then make a motion to approve the plan so we can discuss it. Does that sound good? Sounds good. Okay, Lanny, you're up. Okay. Start with uh why we need to make a change. Um, we need to make a change for two primary reasons. The first is the current um, uh, COVID um, infection and hospitalization surge in Southwest Florida. The second is the um, new recommendations from um, the Centers for Disease Control regarding isolation and quarantine. Um, uh, you have received um, my suggested changes and I move that the board approve um, the document that I sent you um, yesterday with these um, suggested changes. Second. Okay. Any questions? Is there any discussion? I have a question about this management plan in general. I spent about a half hour on our website about an hour ago, couldn't find this. How is this available even to people? How do new people get it? I mean, what? What's the deal on it? It was on the website. I don't know why it's on. It was on the website. I don't know why it isn't now. It is on the website. It's on every document. Open every page, every document. Couldn't find it. Could you tell me where it is? Sure. It's on the website. It's under club documents. And I put it under the rules and regulations section of the website. And the COVID management plan is linked there. Thought I looked there. Didn't see it. Maybe and I believe if you also use the search um, little magnifying glass in the upper right hand corner and type COVID, the page will pop up and link you directly how to get there. And it's certainly not very direct. Okay, let's put it that way. All right. I would suggest that um, the next time we send out a, uh, you know, the periodic messages that we send out to everyone, just telling them what's going on. We uh, inform them, inform the community that there's been a change if we adopt this. There's been a change to the COVID management plan and give them instructions for how to find it. Okay. It can't hurt. Um, so okay. I would I just found it. Okay. Yeah, well, let's go ahead and tell people there's been a change and give them instructions for how to find it uh, in case they're having the same problem that Brownie had. Okay. Yeah, I just noticed the old one is six pages, the new one is nine pages, okay. Um, uh, the, um, I recommend that we um, include the highlights in the FYI news um, uh, in addition to a link. Um, I have a question. Sure, uh, Terry. Yeah, down in section three for staff. Um, staff members shall assess their health daily and take appropriate precautions if they are not healthy. What does that mean? That means stay home if you're sick. But, um, and if you have if you have are we, are we um, going symptoms then you, you can take a COVID test. And if your runny nose is not due to, or your sore throat's not due to COVID, then you can come to work. Okay, so there it's up to them to do the assessment. We're not gonna be responsible for their health. That's why it says that they sh shall assess their health. We don't have um, uh, health staff, uh, health personnel on staff, it's up to them. 
I think it's worth uh, noting at this point that, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mark, we secured a small uh, inventory of, uh, of tests uh, for their use. Is that correct, Mark? As far as I know, I know and Nicole asked uh, Alicia to pick some up on Lehigh. I think that she did get some. Uh, she was hoping for 10, but I don't know if she made all of those, but uh, we're going to use that more. Um, the only people that we know are that we would be testing really on a more, um, let's say, consistent basis would be the food and beverage staff since they have contact. Uh, but um, as far as I know, we do have some. All right, well, the well, go ahead, Melanie. Mark, if you, if you were to need anything, any more than you have, um, I have um, four um, and have more on order. So, um, uh, you know, I'm willing to, to let you buy some of what I have. Okay, thank you. Also, I have another question. Um, we're gonna have our staff wear masks whenever they are within within six feet of anyone. Does that mean that the staff is going to now wear masks outside to, to uh, service our uh, people with food and beverage? If they're within six feet of anyone. Well, they all are gonna be if they're gonna serve. So that means we're gonna to go to outside masks for everybody. I just want to, you know, I want to clarify. Yeah. Some well, I, guess, doing here. I guess I guess I have a question on about that is that the staff that's been here serving you for the past X amount of years, the small consistent staff that we've had here for the past two or three years that have been through this whole pandemic uh, have nothing, you know, to do except for to work for you guys. But we've just had an influx of two to 300 people coming into the community from up north, snowbirds and renters. We have a daily entourage of non-resident uh, members who play tennis, bocce, pickleball, and their guests, family, and everybody else. But nobody else has to mask up whatsoever, except for the staff that seems to be having to do self-assessments, COVID testing, staying at home and doing whatever. There is nothing uh, being said about the rest of the community, its residents or anything. Why, why is the discrimination and the, and the finger pointing being placed upon the staffs at such a high rate compared to the actual people who we would worry about who just came down from, I don't know where, or come in daily. Well, that's from, what, that's uh, my whole point. Other places. That's whole, my, my whole point. I wanna clarify what this is because I don't agree with it either. If you're outside, I, I don't agree that we should have to wear masks. I think mm -hmm. that, it is um, a step above, and for us to go to that level, I, I just don't agree with it. Uh, with that, do you want a response to that or other comments? Well, like that, um, it, ha it has it has been requested by many homeowners. One significant difference is um, most of our staff um, are not over sixty five and are therefore at not at, at high a risk of illness. Um, staff were wearing masks outdoors um, when we were at a similar um, rate of infection um, last year. So it, it really is going back to what we were doing before when we were in the midst um, uh, of, uh, of a severe outbreak. Um, so um, I, I, I don't see any reason that it should be different now when we're back where we were. It's not back where we were. This is a completely different variant, a completely different set of circumstances. The amount of people that are vaccinated are, 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 are at an all-time high. Um, I, I think it's a completely different set of circumstances. It's not the same as it was in March of 2020 whatsoever. I, once again, I feel like that it's a discriminatory action towards the, the members of the small but yet stable and very persistent staff that have gone through all of this probably either have been vaccinated or have had COVID or have had antibodies, but we have no knowledge of the transitory nature of all the rest of the residents, guests, players, renters, family members, snowbirds, et cetera, 
which now have no responsibility to uh, to have any any stipulations on them except for recommending that they do something or another, but you're placing the onus on the staff members. I, I don't understand that that why it's good for the goose and not for the gander. Well, because there are several of us, unfortunately or fortunately, that are over 65 that still work here uh, and there are in the staff membership. John? Uh, well, I agree with what Mark just said, but overall, uh, I mean, a lot of what is out there on that new management plan makes sense. A lot of it's just common sense. There's a couple of things I don't agree with. One is I don't agree with the limiting number of people who will be able to at one time use the fitness center or the uh, activities room or mandating the doors have to be open when there are 20 more people in the oak room. I think keeping the doors open in the oak room is a good idea for circulation. But if there's inclement weather, whether it's windy, rainy, or 95 degrees, that just doesn't make sense. And I also think the people who are worrying about COVID, they have a choice not to go in in those places. Okay. And I also think that most of the people that are really stressed out about COVID or getting it will not come in just because we're lowering the limit to eight or 12 people. So even if I do agree with the limitations which are out there, how are we going to monitor this and enforce this? Well, Again, these, ask... are the, these are the same, um, uh, other than the open doors, these are the same kinds of things that we did um, uh, a year ago. Um, and um, we agreed that self-monitoring was the way to go and it seemed to work. So it's, it's just going back to what we did before. But is the staff going to be at, at 530 in the morning, there's 12 people in the fitness room. Who's telling the four, four ne'er-do-wells to, to leave? Um, we did not set anything up that way. We monitored it. And as, as it was my understanding that we never had more than eight people there. That was the summertime. No, I'm talking about last, last well, I guess we were closed a lot of it. Um, uh, and again, that's why that's um, a, a recommendation, not a mandate, so that staff doesn't have to do it. Um, okay. Ronnie? Okay, step back and look at this. I follow the CDC on TV. I've seen the director a number of times, read it. Overall, I look at where we are today and, and heard a lot of doctors and TV talk about it. I don't think this is as serious as it was a year ago by thing, and actually we're going the other way. The, I know there's more cases, but the, the deaths are down, and spike is probably going to be short-lived based on the other countries so far. So I think we're overreacting uh, in general. I mean, and I think most people are responsible if, you know, I don't think we need to tell our staff if they're sick and got 102 fever and got the symptoms they need to stay home. They know that. I mean, I, so I, I find this a little bit overkill. Uh, and matter of fact, I looked at it. I didn't have a chance to go through it in more detail. I couldn't find that other one. It went from six to nine pages. All we've done is put a lot of new stuff in. And I think we're way beyond what the CDC and most people are doing outside of our community, I go outside the community, and there's places in this document now that you actually uh, have to wear a mask outside, which is certainly I haven't heard from anybody that that's required anywhere. So I think this is overkill and we could spend a lot of time. It's nine pages. There's a lot of changes, not quite sure what each one does, but except it, what everything I see, we're going beyond where we were even a year ago. And I feel the situation on the virus in general is less dangerous than it was a year ago. So a lot more people are vaccinated. We're gonna have the pills pretty soon, hopefully if Biden ever signs the contract. Uh, so I will vote against this change just I don't know. I don't think we can spend this afternoon redoing it, but I just find it too restrictive and 
treating our community and the staff kind of like children. I agree to a certain extent, Ronnie, not as full as you do. I might have, yeah, you know, I mean, I might have overstated a little bit, but I mean, I think we need to, I think we've got a responsible community and responsible staff and no one's going to try to, everybody's going to try to take care of themselves and no one's going to try to do anything to try to harm any other people. And if they have something, they're going to take, you know, they're going to quarantine, they're going to test, they're going to do the things they need to do. Well, I, I wish that were the case, but I am aware of one of our homeowners who um, uh, recently um, flew um, uh, when he was sick um, and infected with COVID um, uh, because he wanted to come home um, and did not um, uh, notify the airlines that he had COVID. Um, and so uh, I, I know that we do have homeowners who are not oh, acting responsibly. That's a great example. What do we do about it? We can't really do anything about it. Well, and that even person we, was- wait a minute, let me, And even if we have this rule, there's always gonna people not follow it. So having this management plan doesn't change it. And here you know about someone that you say violated, we didn't do anything, right? Uh, yes, that person was anything? informed about the Sterling Oaks rules and um, uh, that, that he will not be able to play pickleball um, until he has served his um, isolation time. Um, uh, and by the way, the outdoor mask is fr directly from the CDC website. That's, that's not something from me. Um, they're now recommending that they've shortened the, the isolation time, but um, uh, um, uh, uh, want um, masking at all times for five more days. Now, if they stay home for 10 days, then that's fine. No, that's not true. That's not true. They're, they're, they're quarantined for five days. And if you get a negative test and been vaccinated, you don't have to mask for the five more days. That's if you're for not healthcare. vaccinated, then you do. Okay. Ronnie, that's for healthcare personnel. They they released on the fourth new ones. Well, I don't want to say an argument, but that the point is there's a million details. And I don't think I think this goes beyond the CDC and goes beyond what we were a year ago. And for that matter, I think even the CDC goes beyond what really needs to be done in the current environment. With the with the with so many people asymptomatic and the deaths and the hospitalizations down. Well, our hospitalizations are going up dramatically, um, uh, and um, and and it, you know we have we should share some responsibility to try to keep those hospitalizations down here. And I've also heard that a lot of the hospitalizations are people they're counting they're in the hospital for other reasons, but they happen to have COVID. The point is the death thing is what I really look at and the amount of symptoms and asymptomatic. So I feel like this is overkill and, and so many details and we can't really do anything about it. Let everybody the details are the, the, details are the same as the ones we is. had last year. They're just changed to reflect the five days rather than the 10 days, but it's the same details that we've had from the beginning. There's a lot of stuff in there that wasn't in there before. It's nine pages versus six, and everything I've seen added is more restrictive. Well, not it that was, this makes... A year ago, it was longer. Um, it, it got shorter when, when things got better, and now it's longer again. Yeah, and, and a week ago, you gave us a plan that was had a few changes. And then yesterday, one day before our meeting, we get this plan now that is nine pages that has three whole pages and a lot more added to it. So what happened to what you gave us last week? Last week, I did it based on the recommendations for healthcare providers that CDC released. On Tuesday, they changed, they gave out recommendations that would apply to homeowners in Sterling Oaks. I made those changes yesterday um, uh, as quickly as I could. Um, uh, they did not add significant um, uh, additional um, verbiage, it just um, slightly changed um, the requirements regarding um, testing. Um, and given the difficulty in getting testing, I think that, that the masking probably makes more sense than, than requiring the testing. I'm familiar with the changes they made. They, they basically were less restrictive. When I read this document, and I couldn't compare it directly with the old one because I hadn't found it, but it looks like to me it's more restrictive 
But again, it's a lot more changes than you gave us a week ago, a day before. Not the really. Meeting. It's it's it pretty is. much the same changes as a week ago. Okay. I want to ask Thank a you. question, not that the answer makes a whole lot of difference, I guess, to what we're debating, but in one form or another, and with one venue or another, we've been chatting about making a change to our COVID plan probably for the last three weeks. Um, what I would like to know, if, if, if there's a decent summary of it, Mark, is where do you think our current rules stack up versus other communities and have other communities, to the best of your knowledge, recently made changes to their plan for COVID management? Is there any way you have a feel for that? Uh, the only thing that I've gotten through the uh, club manager's local group uh, has been the difference in golf cart riding. Uh, no changes to the mask mandates, they've said. No changes to their uh, occupation, uh, you know, uh, occupancy levels. Um, all are still at full bore on those. The only thing that's changed that, that their big discussions on is if you're going to play golf, you have to ride uh, one to a cart instead of two. Um, but other than that, that's all I've seen on the web uh, from uh, the day-to-day -day banter that we get back and forth from the other clubs. I know that, um, you know, and the one thing is that the staff here, for instance, we're working inside where we've got uh, people in the dining room, just like it was on New Year's Eve. Uh, we keep the tables as far apart as we can. All the, all the staff is masked. Um, and we try to be as conscious as possible. The doors were open. Um, the comments that I heard, several people asked why, why the staff was wearing masks, um, but everybody enjoyed themselves and had a good time. Um, you know, what we've done in response to this latest surge is uh, this Friday, for instance, it is not gonna be held inside. It is to go only outside. Next week, we're planning a poolside party uh, that is going to be held outside, and we're going to have all the events that are currently scheduled for the indoors over this next month or so to be held outdoors, just uh, to be as uh, open and, uh, and, and outdoors as possible so that we don't have to deal with uh, the problems of being in, inside. So we're trying to do our part here. I just don't know uh, if the mandates that are that are placed upon the staff uh, just don't seem to be the same as uh, you know as what the residents non-residents guests family members uh, have to be I think that uh, I think that that's the only question that we have as staff is that we feel a little put upon and picked upon where we don't feel like we're being more the we're the problem child as much as we are as the as the people that we don't know um, that are coming into the place. That's all. I'd like to. I'd like to make an amendment to uh, alter the masking policy in this new format and uh, take so that the staff only wears masks inside. Outside, they should not. That shouldn't have to. Even even unvaccinated staff. Yes. If we're talking about outdoor, I'd also like to remove that outdoor masking for someone. It's kind of complicated. Uh, someone that's had it and been through the quarantine somewhere. I have there. a second. Well, well let's, let's, do them, let's do them separately, Brownie, because that's that would be going against CDC. This is not directly going it, against it would CDC. Not be going against the CDC, okay? okay. But, First of all, I have an amendment that I just put forth. Yes, and, and I'm, I'm just asking to have that amendment well, only somebody that needs, way. Somebody needs to second the motion or else we can't discuss it. So we, we'll we second have the motion. Thank you, John. I will second that amendment. Okay, now we discuss whether staff needs to have masks outside. 
And I say my, no, obviously. My, I think that the staff should be wearing masks outside when they are serving food. You know, they're standing over tables, they're taking orders. You know, there's very, very close contact. The difference between indoors and outdoors in that type of situation is minimal. You know, I, I just came back from, you know, two different sessions up north in November and December. 100% of the staff in all restaurants, indoors, outdoors, wear masks, you know, at all times. Okay, well, we you. have and, a and, wear mask when they're serving food. Outdoor and in terms, right. of, in terms of staffing, Mark, you, you, you also are aware that at Barefoot Beach, they are mandating their staff to be wearing masks and do health checks, um, et cetera, just the way we have in this policy. So at least one other local club um, is, is doing exactly this kind of thing. Well, we understand that. And, and, and of course, <clears throat> you know, at, <laughs> It's what the other clubs are doing, which is also, you know, it's sort of apples and oranges as well. You know, we have we have a, a full a full twenty four people, including part time individuals. Uh, those clubs all have upwards of ninety to one hundred employees, H two B visa people uh, that are from other countries, etc. So there's a, a little bit of disparity in the in in that situation, but uh, you know, we're we're just trying to understand the Omicron variant has been in place and has been around uh, the, the amount of people testing nationally is somewhere in the millions as far as cases are concerned a day. Um, uh, the hospitalization for it is down. The amount of people that are vaccinated here in property are probably around 90%, uh, I would imagine, or, or somewhere close to that. This, this, the staff that I can tell you, it's not that, you know, 10% of us, I would say that if there are staff that are unvaccinated, it's 10% of the staff, not, not half the staff. Um, we're, we're all adults. We're all very aware of, of our own situations. Um, I, I just don't know why, you know, the service staff is so different than the people who are currently at the pool today, um, sitting next to each other, talking to each other, being close to each other, walking around, hugging and kissing each other, or haven't seen you in two years, honey, it's good to see you. And yet there's no mass mandates or anything that's, that's being required of them. Yeah, you wanna place that on the staff that actually is, I can, I mean, I understand you go to Publix, they all wear, they all wear masks. I can understand that. I can see how that, that situation, I just don't understand if you're gonna mandate it for some, but not for others. And where is it that the staff is, that is, the, is the perpetrator of the disease uh, compared to the transmission level that could be rampant throughout the community simply because of the amount of people that are coming and going. Lonnie, before I go to you, let's call us, let, let's tell it like it is. This is not, discrimination against the staff. The fact of the matter is, like it or not, the staff is the only part of our population that we have any kind of <laughs> control uh, over. <laughs> control over. I mean, that's the truth. That's the truth. <laughs> so with that in mind, we can keep going here. Lanny? Um, two things, Mark. You said that hospitalizations are down. They're not down. Um, they're increasing dramatically here, both uh, NCH and Lee um, Hospital. Um, I, I agree with um, what someone said earlier that this um, surge may be short term and we may be able to change things. But while it's getting worse, um, I think that it's absolutely appropriate to be careful. Um, the staff requirements are in here because homeowners came to me saying we're unhappy that staff are not masked um, and they are young. We know that many of them are unvaccinated. We don't know how many, but um, uh, we expect the people who work for us to be taking um, better precautions when they're within so, six so, feet of us. Okay, a quick poll of the board for the other seven of you. Have you been approached by by people asking for this situation? No, no. no. 
Yes. No. No. Yes. Of course, I've. I've I mean, I haven't we, we haven't. We haven't asked. We haven't. We haven't. We haven't. Nobody's. Nobody's. Nobody's gone to me uh, or to our yes. staff as, as far as an email is concerned or a passing comment. So I just wanted to know if it's anecdotal or if it's these two people that we know that I get phone calls and emails from uh, on a daily basis about about it or not. I'm just. I mean, we're well, here. We have... We're here. We're we're here to serve at the pleasure of the board. You know, this is a, we're employees of the club. We understand that. So, and what Chap said is true is that, you know, we are a group of, uh, of the employees, then you do have control of that situation. So, you know, of course we're going to um, acquiesce and we're going to uh, follow the rules that the board sets down. We work here, we, uh, we appreciate our, our workplace and our, and our uh, paychecks, all of us do. Uh, we we love working here, and that's why you've got a crew that's been here an average tenure of ten years at, or or more at, with every one of them. So uh, we we'll, we will follow your guidelines. We just I just want to make it sure that what I'm echoing is the sentiments of a lot of the staff who who see the people who uh, live here, uh, who play here, who come in as visitors, friends, family, guests, renters. And they just don't know if they they uh, uh, get uh, pushed upon the same way as the staff does. That's all. Um, Mark, I think the answer to that is the um, yes. Some homeowners um, are not concerned about getting infected and behave that way, but the homeowners who are concerned about um, not getting infected don't feel that it's, it, it is taking away an amenity that they think that they should have a right to if, um, if they cannot feel safe around um, our service staff. Um, that is, if, if, if they have to choose not to go to the cabana because staff won't, you know, are not required to wear a mask, that doesn't seem to be a, an appropriate um, uh, punishment on them when um, when other staff, as you say, and other business establishments are taking precautions to um, not be spreading the infection to the patrons of those businesses. Um, so we're I, I asking- I fully understand, Lanny. It's just that those same people who worry about the staff sit in close contact and are with, with their friends and, and their other family and people they don't know in very close contact with them at all times. And they don't seem to have a problem with that. So I think you don't a, know that that's true for everyone that has no, concerns, Mark. I, I hear you, but if okay. they're that worried about being around individuals who may or may not be vaccinated, and they don't know who they are, they sure don't seem to have a problem being in the pro close proximity of a crowd. But they are worried about being around a staff member. It just is a little odd. And then we're talking about the couple of two or three people that we do know that are. Yeah. Um, I'm getting a lot of interference from someplace. Does, does somebody have? It's Ken. Are you guys there? Yeah. yeah. Here. All right, Mike. Yeah, it was Mike? Ken. I have, I have a question. Why do the staff feel it's such a hardship to wear a mask? They don't. They don't, Mike, at all. We don't feel it's a hardship. That's what we I'm hearing. Masks. No. That's exactly we, we wore, what I'm hearing. We wore masks for two years, Mike. Two well, years so, we've been so wearing the a mask. Of us. Uh, everybody is. But you know what? When it gets down to it, what we find out is that the rest of the population out there doesn't seem to give a darn and and they are they are they are vocal about the fact that they're down here in Florida and having a good time and they just want to enjoy their lives because there aren't the mask mandates that there are up in New York and and some of the other places so they ask the staff why is it why is it that you guys have to do that and we we just go that's because that's the board's uh, protocols. It's their rules and regulations, and that's what we deal with. They just don't know if it applies to them. It doesn't seem to apply to 
the residents and to the guests and to the people that are transient nature. We're, as I said before, we're not against it. We just are ask, they're asking the questions as to why. Well, we comply and we have complied with the rules from day one. You and we should be setting a good example. And they should be setting a good example. Brownie? The motion is just about the mask for the staff outside, right? That's the yes. amendment that we're debating right well, now, correct? Oh, outside, okay. Yes. Well, I've noticed that the pool, there's, there's, you know, people don't stay six feet apart. They're around all of that. So, and the other thing that we're, again, if you follow this, there's been another study is basically that the cloth mask, particularly with the contagious aspect of this Omicron, doesn't do any good anyway. That's why. I'm sure that Lanny has put in here everywhere she miss, puts masks. She says recommended those N95 or whatever they are because it's pretty much shown that the cloth masks don't do anything anyway. So, uh, I, you know, if we're going to do masks, uh, we, we probably then get into the issue of requiring the N95 for the staff, which I don't recommend but to have them wear a cloth one, particularly outside when no one, no one else is, uh, and there are other people that are just this close. If you go out to the pool, I watched it yesterday morning, there were a lot of people, number of people, and most of them weren't six feet apart and they weren't all in the same group, okay? Which, which right, makes the yeah. point, probably some of those are from up north where the staff been down here the whole time and you know, been pretty much part of the community and been very good about it. Well, we'll go to Lanny one more time and then I think it's time to review what we're voting on right now and vote on it. Lanny? Um, yes, Brownie, um, it's certainly true that some people are within six feet of each other, but many other people are, are keeping social distance. And I think as a board, we have the responsibility to keep our facility safe, um, uh, consistent with um, national guidelines um, for those who want to be safe. Those who don't want to be safe don't have to be safe. We don't, we're not mandating that. But I think it's unfair for you to say just because some people are not being safe, we don't need um, to ask staff to be safe. If someone's that paranoid, they shouldn't be going to the pool where there are other people. They shouldn't be going out to, you know, if they're that paranoid, stay at home, okay? Stay away from people. You can't put the whole world for you, what you want. In other words, you make your own individual decision about how responsible you are. And if you're that paranoid an amendment, about it, stay at home. We have an amendment on the table that has been seconded. In rough language, the amendment is to not require the masks for the staff outdoors on an outside basis, correct? Outside, yes. All right, all in favor of the oh, yeah. amendment, raise your hand and say aye. So, aye. 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 One, two, three. Correct. I, I'm confused on what I means. Okay. We're I means we're adopting the amendment. Out, right? There's it was it's four to four, so it's actually tied. It it's fails. four to four. So what does a tie mean? It fails. It fails. All right, the amendment Did fails. You know it was four to four. I haven't voted, CSON, because I wasn't clear. I don't know how you know it's four to four because I'm sorry, I we'll saw your hand up, Brownie. We'll take another vote. Those What's in favor the of adopting the mean... amendment, it's not that complicated. What we're voting on is an amendment to waive the requirement for out for masking outside. That's okay. the amendment. All right, all in favor of that amendment say aye. 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 One, two, three. Three? Four. 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 The amendment Brownian. The amendment there. fails. Right. Okay, with that. Are there any other amendments that people would like to propose? Yeah, I'd like yes. an amendment. Okay. And under the key points 
And number three, fully immunized and boosted and have a close contact. It talks about you've got to wear a mask outside for 10 days. That's a little bit overkill. I've never seen that anywhere. Where is this interference coming from? What's that? Ken, like I said. So I would it's from Ken. It's from Ken's motion. background. I make the motion to eliminate that paragraph three under key points. Paragraph three under key points. If you're fully immunized and boosted and have a close contact, if you know that, okay. with an infected person, you do not need to quarantine unless you have symptoms. But you must wear a face mask that covers your nose and mask for 10 days when around others indoors or outdoors. So if you happen to find out that you might have been near someone that got infected, and even though you've been vaccinated and boosted and have no symptoms, you got to wear a mask for outdoors and indoors around anyone for 10 days. That's way beyond anything I've heard from the CDC. Um, it's a direct quote from the CDC, Brownie. We need a second on the motion, please. Second. Okay. Make no, sure I know that. what paragraph I don't we're talking about. I'll say that, Lanny. But regardless if it is or not, I make the amendment to remove that. That's a little bit bizarre. We're, we're talking about 3D. Is that correct? Yes. The way this no, is done. No, no. He's talking about page five under key <laughs> points. It's section okay. two. Number three. three. Okay, let me find it. <laughs> okay, it's also repeated later, yeah, but repeated that's later. that's where where he's talking about the bottom. Oh, okay. Of, so bottom of page five. Yeah, I got it. Else also. All right, Brownie is offering an amendment to remove that requirement. Correct. Yeah. That correct. But the reason that's more the restricted than if you're infected. I just yeah. want to know. I just yeah. want to make sure we all know what you're proposing. You are proposing that we eliminate number three key point. Is that correct? Yeah, and as as Lanny points out, that same thing occurs down under. Uh, Ed. Somewhere else. Where is that, Lanny? Like I say, I got this thing yesterday in nine page pages. Page six. Page, yeah, page six. six. 3D. 3D. Yeah, 3D, right. Yeah, it's yeah. Well, repeated. Well, if we eliminate number three, we're eliminating 3D. Correct. Yes. Okay, yeah, they're both the same All right, thing. So that's the Here's amendment. The is there a second to that amendment? Second. All right, discussion. Well, does everybody understand? In other words, if you just happen to hear you might have been near somebody who got infected, do you want to be required to wear a mask for 10 days indoors and outdoors if you're near any person? So let me make sure you understand what that says. Clarification, Brownie, it's not if you just happen to be near them. The, the, it is defined as being within six feet of an infected person for a cumulative total of 15 minutes or more over a 24 hour period, starting from two days before their illness um, and um, until the time the patient is isolated. So it's not just any random um, uh, passing by, it's a, it's a it, the uh, term uh, close contact is carefully defined and that's in our document. So it's-, Which it's you may or may not know, okay, yeah. It's, yes, it's, but this is, this is only if you know it. If you don't know it, it doesn't apply to you. But if you know that you were playing cards with your buddy um, and, uh, um, yesterday and uh, um, he's infected um, until um, uh, we know that you're not infected, um, uh, you need to um, uh, protect others around you from spreading the disease exactly as long as he is. 
it's 10 days whether you're infected or whether you're a close contact, just the starting date is different. Hey, Lanny, is, Lanny is, that, uh, is that the uh, CDC's uh, latest yes. recommendation? It's the recommendation for um, general citizens. It's different from the recommendation for healthcare providers. Um, they, ha they um, uh, well, I mean, it really isn't because they're wearing masks too. So, um, uh, but yes, it, it is the CDC recommendation that came out on Tuesday of this week, the 4th. That's more very respectful. few of you, very you few of you are going to like this. Push. Very few of you are going to like this. But it seems to me, if this document is going to have any teeth at all, we should really be trying to restrict it to those items that we can control and monitor. In other words, if we want to require masks outdoors, we can, for staff, we can control and monitor that. If we want to require that doors be open in the, uh, in the dining room when there's more than 20 people there, we can monitor that and enforce that. If we want to require that no more than eight people at one time be in the gym, we can monitor that and try to control it. If we want to require that no more than what, 12 people be in the multi-purpose room, we can monitor that out and try to require it. This particular key point, there is no way we're going to monitor that or require it. So I think if we're gonna have, hold on Lonnie, I think if we're gonna have a management plan, it should be, restricted to the ones that we have any hope of monitoring and requiring. This, this borders on overkill to me. I got a question. Why, Chat. Why, why, I have a question. Uh, you know, when you were talking about this being restrictive and just what you went over, uh, Chap, what if we said that this is the recommendation that we're making as opposed to the restrictions that have to be in place? Um, I, I don't think that's appropriate. First of all, this is exactly the same kind of thing that we had um, uh, uh, in the plan a year ago. So this is not new people, but Chap, the reason why um, having it required is helpful to those of us using our amenities is that we will self-monitor if we we know when we've got a player who's infected, um, who, who had a close contact. Many of us don't want that player around until they've served their quarantine. If if we don't have this rule, then we don't have a way to say, "I'm sorry, you can't play." Um, you know, our rules are that you have to serve your quarantine, just like the CDC says. So I have no expectation that staff is responsible, but please let other homeowners self-monitor um, and have um, so the teeth so that, that we're not telling our friend, um, we don't want you here because we don't want you here. We, we don't want you here because these are our club rules. And they were this, and it's exactly the same rules as we've, we've had actually the whole time. We never dropped this rule. It's just, uh, so this was, this is the current rule. Um, uh, uh, so it's, it'll be a big change to take it away and taking oh, away this minute. rule at it, this point in time. You have it to change. That's, that can't be true then. You just, you have it, the rule that I propose you take out is all in yellow, which in, in, indicates you changed it. Now you just said it's not a change. That's not, can't be, that's inconsistent, Lanny. Okay, the, the wording has changed because I use the new CDC wording. That's correct. Okay. But the if fact you changed that the wording, you changed it, okay? I, and and it, you had yeah, to have okay. a reason. But so you can't have my, it both ways. You can't tell me this is what we already have and okay. then say that it was a change, okay? I'll, I'll, this is I'll part of the problem. Cezanne, can you look up the, the current wording for close contacts? Um, but my point is, we, we currently have a rule and we've had it since the beginning that close contacts have to quarantine. 
um, and they can't come back for 10 days. Um, because the wording this changed, I updated the wording. This is, an, this is about worrying. Well, first of all, the 10 day quarantine has been changed to five days. That's one of the changes. But plus five the, days of masking. Chap had a very good point. I never thought about it, Chap. Another way of saying it is anything that's in a CDC rule, we don't really need to put. It's already a requirement. We really ought to have the things that only apply to Sterling Oaks. We shouldn't try to repeat everything in the CDC because people are already responsible to follow those. That was a good point you made, Chap. Well, that's my, that was my point in a nutshell. Yeah. All right, we have uh, an amendment on the table which has been seconded to remove number three, both under the, um, the summary and 3D. 3D. Right. Yeah. Under I the. I have a clarification question. So if we remove this, this pickleball player um, who is currently in um, uh, um, isolation for his infection, um, like never mind, it doesn't apply to him. Never mind. But his close contact wouldn't have to uh, quarantine. All right, we have an amendment on the table to remove both of the number threes, <laughs> the three and the three D. Without seeing no more discussion, all in favor of removing that item, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 One, two, three, aye. four, five. The amendment passes. Okay, I think we've got at least two other, or two or three other items that are in this where there was considerable interest. I just want to see if there's any amendment. The first item was opening the doors. We only have eight. Does anybody want to offer an amendment to that? I don't because I think it's a damn good idea. What happens when you have 95 degrees out? Still got to be open. Everybody suffers. I suppose. Well, it's not or when likely. It's real but... windy and people are trying to play cards or whatever along the veranda there. What do you got to do? If well, they're on the, the veranda, veranda, they're outside. Okay, close to the veranda, I said, not in, uh, okay. on the veranda. Sorry. Um, my, answer, my answer to that is we'll change this again. Hopefully, things will change. And before it gets 95 again, We'll have a whole set of rules that eliminates most of this anyway. Hey, chap. Yes, sir. I got a question for Mark. Mark, you got any indication of what value opening the doors have? Uh, <laughs> um, I mean, other than it's fresh air, uh, you know, we don't have an issue with really opening the doors, and uh, you know, we uh, the ones on the veranda, the sliding glass doors. We can open, um, we do have the Aon system, which seems to be working. In fact, it's, it's getting its uh, quarterly PM preventive maintenance uh, today. Um, it's being all checked out, all filters being changed. Once again, we do that now um, monthly. And so um, uh, I, I don't, we, you know, opening the doors, I don't, you know, it, there's only so many doors that can open. So, uh, <clears throat> You know, if we could, we can open the doors and the ladies don't have to be right next to that door, but it does provide some extra, extra fresh air into the place. That's fine. Uh, you know, the ACs uh, probably just have to work a little harder when it's warm and, and, uh, and if it's colder, uh, wear a sweater, I guess. My, my purpose in bringing this up was to see if there was any interest on anyone's part to offer an amendment to eliminate this. If there isn't, we can move on. All right, we're moving on. The next item is 
restricting the number of people in the multi-purpose room, is that correct, to uh, 12? Multi-purpose multi -purpose room and the fitness center. Well, there's but there's two different numbers. Okay. Yeah. The multi-purpose room is 12 people. So let's deal with that first. Does anyone want to offer an amendment to change that? Is there a restriction placed right now? No. no. Okay. I make a motion to take that out. Is there a second? Second. All I, right, I we have a motion and a second. Let's discuss it, please. Discussion. At, at this current time, there hasn't been a whole lot of people that have been really utilizing the uh, the room. We have Mondays, we have art group down there, which is four to six. There's Plus more than stuff. 12 people in it right now. There are more than 12 people in it, all because we, well. Yeah, you have? have two different groups oh, of individuals use, uh, you utilizing. You've got the Mahjong ladies downstairs playing, uh, playing Mahjong and they're having lunch. That's correct, that's right. So. Well, it's season, so you're right. Yeah, people could there could be more than twelve. Why? Um, I know that in the fitness center, when there's um, um, uh, eight people, um, our CO two monitor is indicating. We're not talking about the fitness center I, right I, now. I understand. I'm just giving numbers and examples. All right. Um, eight in that space, um, uh, uh, where people are probably breathing heavier. Um, creates an unsafe indoor air quality environment. Um, we had 12 before in the fitness center. We have no CO2 monitor in, in I mean, in the uh, multi-purpose room. We have no CO2 monitor in the multi-purpose room. So we don't know exactly how many people um, would make the indoor air quality unsafe. But that, but uh, looking at the space size, I, I think um, 12 is, is probably a reasonable accommodation Another um, uh, corollary to this is we could put a CO2 monitor in that room um, and um, uh, have that uh, looked at to see um, how the indoor air quality is doing. Ken, you need to go mute again. Thank you. Is there any more discussion? We, if not, we have a motion on the table to eliminate the 12 person occupancy Second. level for the for the uh, multi-purpose room just a quick question do you, when we in the in the event that this is uh, um, approved do we put the signs on the door stating that occupancy would is no greater than 12 yes however if it gets to 13 15 16 or 18. Uh, at a point in time, it's the staff is going to go down and say, hello, some of you leave, or how do you want <laughs> us to deal with that situation when they're playing bridge? And there's four tables of bridge, not three, because it's four to a table. I, I, I just don't know, how do you want us to, to best, best deal with the situation? I would also. recommend that because you know the groups that are using them, let them know that that's, that's our, our new rule and that they should only schedule that many people. So do it proactively um, rather than, than waiting for too many people to show up. If we say 12 and you wind up for some reason <laughs> knowing that there's 16, I think the appropriate thing to do is remind the 16 that the limit is supposed to be 12 and let them take care of it. Okay. We're not gonna throw them out. Thank you. Oh, what? John? Okay. So, okay, yeah, so once again, if we, we're not gonna throw anybody out, why do we have this rule? First of all, 12 is an arbitrary number from Lonnie. Okay, so why why is it 12? Okay, and if someone is that concerned about it, they don't go. So why do we have to punish everybody else because some people might not want to be in there? That's why I think there should be no limit on that. John Mihawk? Yeah, the other thing is, you know, that room seems to be big enough that 
you could separate the tables and still be within or outside of the six foot uh, distancing uh, criteria. So if you had four tables, which would be maybe 16 people, but the tables were six foot apart, aren't we still in compliance with uh, you know the recommendations? The problem is we there's there's only one door, so we can't have we can't open doors and have good airflow there. Well, it doesn't uh, make any difference. We're still six feet apart, right? Uh, no, it does make a difference. <laughs> uh, oh. You know. Yeah, you know, you, you should be both trying to increase ventilation and keeping apart. Um, and we just can't do it in that space. I thought the ventilation was improved down there that it would allow for more than the 12 people. Well, my point is uh, the fitness center only allows eight before the I'm indoor I'm air I'm talking about, I'm not talking about the fitness no. center. Right. I'm talking about that. that other room. Right. I, I think, you know, it, it, I, I certainly agree with John, it's arbitrary. It's the same number we had last year. So I just put back this in is the different. same this number. This isn't last year. Right. Uh, however, um, the, the disease is much more contagious than it was last yeah. year. And, so, and plus uh, everybody that's in the hospital, most everybody in the hospital are the non-vaccinated people. About 60%. That means 40% aren't. Um, so there's a lot of people who are, who are vaccinated who are hospitalized. Well, they I don't, don't have to go. Them. They don't have to go uh, into their room. Right. Okay. Um, I, I do recommend um, uh, if we're going to drop this for now, that we put a CO2 monitor in just like we have in the, um, in the fitness center. So we get a better sense of what this room accommodates. That because sounds reasonable. Mark thought that the fitness center would accommodate a lot more people than it does. Mark, well, that, that, that sounds reasonable. reasonable. Excuse me, Mark, Mark, you have something to say? I'll buy one of those. <laughs> okay. So. Okay, well, I'll reword the amendment then. The amendment is to eliminate the 12 person occupancy limit for the multi-purpose room and to install a CO2 monitor. Is that correct? Mm, well, that's a completely different motion. It had to be second. And CO2 right. level has nothing to do with whether or not the virus happens to be in the air. I, I know it, the CO2 level theoretically will change the more people you have. I don't know what that's going to prove. That doesn't say the virus is in there or not, though. I don't know why we should be monitoring CO2. All right, let's vote on the uh, amendment that was first the presented. Anyway. The amendment was first presented was to eliminate the 12 person occupancy load limit for the multi-purpose room all in favor of eliminating that raise your hand uh aye. all right aye. that motion passes i would like now to offer a second amendment that and this has got i guess it's got nothing to that, that the amendment is we eliminate the 12 person occupancy limit and install a CO2 monitor. We've already eliminated the 12. Correct. You've already That's eliminated. You've already eliminated oh, the 12 person. I'm so confused. and Mark already said he could buy one, so we could buy one and we're good. All right, we'll buy one and we're good. I'd like to hear okay. the logic of why we have a CO2 monitor it has nothing to do with whether or not the virus is there more people you put in the room, it could go up a little bit, but so what? Well, I'm not a doctor. I don't know, Lenny. Well, what I have a think about that? engineering. I know a little bit about that. I, I don't understand that. Lanny, maybe you can explain. Yes. Um, uh, as part of improving ventilation as a um, disease control measure, um, CO2 monitors are recommended as a um, parameter that can be measured because we cannot measure viral particles in the air um, to assess the adequacy of the ventilation system um, at, for the people in that room. So that um, if the um, CO2 uh, level goes into um, the unhealthy or harmful levels, that is an indication that your ventilation is not um, providing enough fresh air 
for um, the environment and will be increasing the likelihood of any, any infections being spread, whether they be um, uh, COVID viruses or um, anything else um, as part of um, our obligation to providing our, our citizens, uh, our, our residents, um, good indoor air quality um, we should always have good indoor air quality in all our all our rooms, um, and we have an extra reason with this, and it has been helpful in the fitness center. The elimination. Of that, we need to have a scientific study to see what the base is in the room anyway, with no people, with different levels, and we had to do a whole study just because you put a CO two monitor in there. Uh, isn't going to give you any indication of what's good or bad. We have to have a standard. You understand? There, there is we currently a have a CO2 monitor in the fitness room. What do we do with it? Um, uh, uh, participants in the fitness center, especially those on the fitness um, committee, monitor it. Um, uh, and uh, most of the time it is in the good um, area. Um, and um, in my own experience, it's only been um, in the elevated level when there happened to be eight participants in the fitness center. Have we ever had to make a change to the occupancy of the fitness center because of our monitoring of the CO2 level? Have um, we ever had we, to make a change? We, um, we put the eight person limit in um, a previous COVID management plan because of it. So that's, my, that, that is a change that we made. My question is simply, have we ever taken any action because of certain CO2 levels in the fitness center? I mean, it's okay to say no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, I wouldn't be the one taking action. So I it would, Mark or Suzanne need to answer that. So if we've never done anything with the one we have now, why put in another one? And who monitors it? I mean, who has the responsibility? I'm not trying to be an it? asshole here. I'm, I'm just trying. I'm just trying to be logical. Well, um, uh, um, John was saying that the number of twelve was too arbitrary. Um, if we find by using the CO2 monitor that our air quality um, index is poor when we have 16 people in the uh, multi-purpose room, we probably need to either improve our ventilation um, because it's not working the way it's supposed to or um, uh, um, restrict um, how many people are in there. Um, so it's a, it, it's, it's a very good indoor air quality tool. Um, and I, I think it's been helpful in the fitness center. All right, so all we have to do now is I will make a motion and we'll vote it yes or no, up or down. I will make a motion that we install a CO2 monitor in the fitness center. I'm making that motion so not the fitness in the center. multi-purpose room. I thought we're talking about the multi-purpose room. We are. I, I misspoke. I move that we install a CO2 monitor in the multi-purpose room. I'll second. I need a second so we can second. vote Mike, on it. Just Mike seconded it already. Mike seconded. Is there any further discussion? I have a discussion. Mark, I have a question about our, about our air conditioning system. On a normal day, do we have, does the fan stay on where we get the same circulation, whether or not the heater or cooling is on or not? How does that, how does yeah. our system work? Fan, fan, fans are on, not on auto, they're on on. They're what? So we, we, if the temperature drops, the AC comes on. However, we still have the fans on. And in the multi-purpose room specifically, inside air uh, is out, is pushed out, and we have uh, outdoor air being pulled in through a uh, through the vents on the outside of the building that go into that air air handler. So that well, is a mixed air sand. That's on question. all the time. But the fans stay on even if you're not cooling or heating. Yeah, fans are on. Even if you're not cooling or heating. Yes. Okay. All right, we have a 
Motion that's been seconded to install a CO2 monitor in the multi-purpose room. All in favor say aye. Aye. One, two, three, ayes. Motion Four. fails. Four. Four. Motion still fails. Okay. Um, the last one that seemed that I'm aware of that seemed to uh, generate some interest in discussion was what change are we recommending in the fitness center? Can somebody remind me? People objected to the eight person limit. Eight person limit. In the fitness center. Is there a limit now, Lanny? No, there, there, there was um, uh, last year, but there is not now. Okay. Does anybody want to change that? We're making a mo make a, an amendment to change that. I do and make a motion and we don't have a limit similar to the all purpose room. Well, that's the case now, right? There is no limit in the fitness center. Correct, correct. Then we're, the, the motion would be just to leave it alone, wouldn't it? Yes. Well, that, except, that, that. except it, I've, I've moved to have this document accepted. So we have to take it out of the document if we're going to uh, oh, okay. vote to. Sorry, sorry. No problem. Then the motion would be to take it out. Yes. yes. All right, John has made a motion to take it out, correct, John Mulligan? Yes. Is there a second? I'll second. Motion has been second. made and seconded. Is there, let's discuss it. If there's no discussion, we just move to a vote, I guess. Okay, all in favor of taking out the eight person limit to the fitness center from the current recommendation, say aye, raise your hand and say aye. 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 One, two, three, four. Wait, Wait. You're, you're saying that you want to remove the limit of eight people at the fitness center to allow any number of individuals in the fitness center at any time, still keeping the hour masking at 12. Yeah, we're not to touching the masking. I know. I'm just saying that. But that, that yes, just just the just the number of people is that correct? Right. Right. Okay. All right. All right. So we're the motion is to eliminate the eight person limit in this in this plan while keeping the one hour masking. Yeah. Per yeah. day request correct right yeah, and, and, that's, and there are only four well and the and wait the a minute. I've, I've lost track of the, i've lost count of the vote so oh, all in favor of that a hey, chap um, let me yeah. just understand this there is no limit now of eight it's just that this new document is suggesting that we go to eight yes. and the vote is do we put that new limit in or not. Correct. And the motion is the motion is right. not. <laughs> the motion is to not not do that. Right. Okay. okay. Yep. All right. And it's been seconded, I believe. All in favor of not doing that or adopting the motion, please say aye and raise your hand. All right. All right. Aye. One, two, three, four. Doesn't pass. So the motion fails. Right. So that means it stays in at eight. At eight. So, so the right. motion fails, but oh, four people agree that we're going to change it. And that's that's not over fifty percent. So I, I don't no, understand no, no. how this works. Yeah, Robert's yeah, rules of order is Terry, Terry, you want to explain that? Yeah, very very simply. You need a majority to pass any resolution or any any type of vote. With four four, it's tied, so therefore it fails. 
If we're not changing the current rule. <laughs> she is. So how is that passing? Because now you get a chance to vote on it for the entire thing. Because the motion that's being have, amended is to the main adopt motion this is, plan. The main motion is yet to be voted on, John. Okay. okay. The main motion is probably now because I don't see any more amendments coming. And then we have a chance to vote it. If it's 4-4 with the main motion, it'll fail too. Okay, gotcha. So was the, <laughs> I made the friggin' motion and I don't remember what I moved. <laughs> but did we just, did we just, uh, we just vote agreed that, to that eliminate limit. the limit? The, no, yes. The eight stays in there. Okay. And that, and that motion. Failed. Or failed. 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 That's so, failed. so within the current proposed that you guys will be voting on, you are voting to um, have a max of eight people in the fitness center. Right. Okay. okay. Go back to the main motion now, which will be the entire project. So the only differences in the main motion in that proposed document is that you eliminated the close contact items which were under number three of key points and 3D of personal responsibility. And you eliminated um, the max of 12 people in the multi-purpose room. The rest of the Correct. document stands. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And I, I, I've edited it as we went along, Cezanne. All right, so. Let's vote, I, I move we adopt the amended motion. That's not good. Motion now. Second. All in favor? Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> We're voting on the total package now? On yeah, the yes. total package as it's been amended. Yeah, okay. It's the total package as amended. Total package as amendment. One, two, three, four. Five, the motion passes. I think we're done with the business for today. Um, <laughs> now, our next scheduled board meetings on the 27th of January. <laughs> Let's make sure we know or agree on how this meeting next meeting is going to take place. I am in favor of having the meeting in person. I am in favor of having an audience that's required to wear masks with the doors open. Now, how does everyone feel about that? I agree. I um, agree. I, well, I don't. We Will we be wearing wearing masks, Chad? Yes. Okay. There doesn't seem to be is, any. Is there? Is there? A, if you do that, is there still an option that uh, a board member could uh, attend via Zoom, or they must be there? I I don't think we have the technical capability to be able to have the Zoom meeting with the audience. And uh, and the board all at the same time and have it work well. But you can do it by phone. That's the way we used can, to do it. But yeah, you can also here. record. You can record it too, Mark. You don't have to have it. John, if you don't want to attend, or Brownie, or Blanny, or Mike, or Chap. If you don't want to attend in person, but want to be part of the meeting, you can do it by phone. That's the way we used to do it. Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure what the options are. We'll have to figure out the Zoom lo logics on that because I don't even think we have a hookup for that phone anymore. So um, we'll have but to figure that out. There will be some option. Sure. Either Zoom or, yeah. Yeah. yeah we'll figure for out me, it, some option. For me, it's for going any... to depend on what things are like in two weeks. We'll try to fit, we'll figure out some option for any board member that doesn't want to attend in person to be able to participate. I believe if there's anybody that 
the just you guys are going to have your back to the audience because you're going to have to watch the projector to watch those on Zoom. So the the room well, will not be, be on, But who's going to be on Zoom? I know John will Mihawk will be on Zoom. Well, why Maybe. can't it be by phone? Maybe because they don't have the capability to be by phone unless you want to put somebody's cell phone in the middle of the table. We don't have a conference phone anymore. I don't think the port was installed when we redid the clubhouse. I think I did. I can check. Well, well, I'm not going to have my. I'm not going to have my back to the audience. Yeah, we've so, got a couple of weeks to go. I'll, I'll figure, figure out, out a way. Figure out a way that it doesn't have to be zoomed. If that means I have to have my back to the audience. Uh, I'll okay. figure out something. All right. Got it. Let me ask the question. At this point, what members do not plan on attending in person? I'm not sure yet, Brownie. Okay. And I'm not sure either. Okay. So there are a couple that are not sure. Okay. But the requirements would be the, mem the board members that have to be masked and anybody in the audience has to be masked. Okay. And the doors will be open. Yeah. I agree, Jeff. Yeah. I don't want my back to the to the members either, they might start throwing things at us. <laughs> and you won't be able to see who threw it. Exactly. Or duck. <laughs> well, you can watch on the Zoom. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I think, <laughs> I know you're only kidding, but as far as I can tell, and I get a lot of communication, uh, not too many people are upset with us right now. <laughs> So the chances of getting hit with something is pretty remote. <laughs> uh, those that seem to be upset, I would classify in two categories. Uh, number one would be those that don't think we've gone far enough with our COVID plan. And the second might be an individual or two who still wants us to install some kind of barrier at the entrance <laughs> to the uh, community so somebody doesn't get run over. But <laughs> other than that, uh, I'm not aware of any major disagreements flying around the community. So with that, I propose we, uh, somebody make a move to adjourn and we're done. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you for attending. And Brownie, I guess I'm pretty glad we did this. So. Chap, let me mention one thing. I know the meeting's over.